Welcome to Sports News. The World Football Governing Body, FIFA, sanctioned the Nigeria Football Federation for fielding an ineligible player in the 2018 World Cup qualifiers between the Super Eagles and the Desert Foxes of Algeria. The disciplinary committee of the body says the three-time African champions fielded Shehu Abdullahi, who was ineligible for the qualifier against Algeria on November the 10th. The committee has now awarded three points and three nil in favor of Algeria, with the NFF also receiving a fine of 2.2 million naira. However, the sanction does not in any way hurt Nigeria's qualification for the 2018 FIFA World Cup finals, as the Super Eagles have picked the ticket from Group B ahead of the clash in Constantine. Meanwhile, the Nigeria Football Federation says it has accepted the decision of the FIFA Disciplinary Committee to find the NFF and award the match to Algeria. However, President of the Federation, Amaji Pinnock, has directed that an internal inquiry be instituted immediately and persons found culpable be dealt with. The President says the NFF is also looking at a reorganization of its technical department. Nigeria's point in the group states have now dropped from 14 to 11, while Algeria gets five points. And the national under-17 women's team, the Flamingos, will arrive in Benin City, the Adolfi capital, on Wednesday, ahead of the 2018 FIFA Women's World Cup qualifier return leg clash against Ethiopia. Although the Flamingos enjoy an away goal advantage, following a one-all draw in the first leg in Addis Ababa, Coach Bala and Kiru has charged the young girls to go out for victory. The winner of the tie will face the winner between Cameroon and Algeria in the last round of qualifiers. Nigeria have qualified for every single edition of the FIFA on its 17 Women's World Cup since inception, five in total. And former heavyweight champion Tyson Fury is free to resume his boxing career after reaching an agreement with UK anti-doping over the charges against him. Fury was charged with a doping offense by the UK ADA in June 2016, and the anti-doping body said in a statement that the fighter had accepted a backdated two-year ban, which expires at midnight today. He's free to fight again once he regains his boxing license, with the British Boxing Board of Control also agreeing to the resolution. A second charge against Fury over his alleged failure to provide a sample in September 2016 has also been withdrawn. And with that, we end on Sports News for tonight. I'm Brian Tony Ranta and Ijama will be back for that. Thanks a lot, Barang. Amnesty International says European governments are knowingly complicit in the torture and abuse of refugees and migrants in Libya. The group claims that in an effort to stem migration, the EU is actively supporting a system of abuse and exploitation on Libyan shores. It was initially known as a place of transit for migrants on their way to Europe. But Libya has now become a trafficking market where people are bought and sold on a daily basis for as little as $200. Migrants on their way to Libya are kidnapped. They are kidnapped when they walk in and sold for as little as 300 Libyan diners. Then they ask the families of those they kidnapped to pay for their release. I was also a victim and my family had to pay one. Six years after the fall of Muammar Gaddafi, Libya is still a lawless state where armed groups compete for land and resources and large weapons and people smuggling networks operate with impunity. Reports of abuse against African migrants also dominated a two-day Africa-Europe summit as European Union leaders met their African Union counterparts in Cote d'Ivoire last month. Let me repeat my call to impose UN sanctions on human smugglers and traffickers. In its latest report, Amnesty International says EU funds are going to authorities working with militia and people smugglers. It also says the EU has provided ships, training and funding to the Libyan Coast Guard. Analysts expect the EU to deny this claim, but Amnesty International says it is certain that it has enough evidence to take EU governments to court. And the main news again. The appeal court in Abuja today ordered the retrial of the Senate President Bukola Saraki by the Code of Conduct Tribunal on three out of an 18-count charge of alleged false assets declaration. Also today, the House of Representatives Committee faulted the alleged exemption of some MDAs from remitting funds into the Treasury single account. 
and human rights group Amnesty International today accuse European governments of complicity in the torture and abuse of refugees and migrants in Libya. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks so much for staying with us. I'm Ijo Mahkunyato. You have a good night.